YouTube today we're gonna go over the Kingler team that I used for back to back battles. Let's get started and roll the episode. So why Kingler? Kingler is an interesting Pokemon, especially with its G-Max form. Basically the a form of a speed control in the fact of a really strong move, especially with good coverage with the water typing. And the base attack stat for Kingler is actually pretty high with the Hyper Cutter ability to prevent Intimidates. It's actually a pretty solid move. The problems with Kingler, of course, are its low special defense stat, its low HP stat, and not so great speed, but it does outspeed most Incineroars, especially the Incineroars that are pretty slow. So that is pretty nice. So I wanted to try this Pokemon for a while. I haven't been able to find many factors of why I want to use Kingler, but then I decided, you know what, with fast Calyrexes, which have been really just dominating the ladder recently, I felt like, ooh, you know what? Maybe I could try it out with Fast Calyrex. I do have the idea of using Fisher's Render Bolt Beak with Kingler. And you know what? Maybe now is the time to shine. So that is how, why I want to use Kingler and try it out. So how was the team formed? Well, it started off with the G-Max Kingler. I had the Assault Vest idea and I knew that I wanted Assault Vest to help out its low special defense. So I knew I wanted the Assault Vest, but it still didn't take special attacks that well, even with the Assault Vest, even with all the investments. So I knew I needed some kind of form of screen. So I started off with this core of Kingler Grimstone, which I felt like was really well complemented on the team. The next two Pokemon I knew I wanted was the Restricted Pokemon, as well as a Pokemon that had either the move Fishes Rend or Bolt Beak, which are powered if the user does go before the opponent. And I felt like that was really important to me. So I knew I wanted either form of Dracovish, Dracozolt, or Arctozolt and the Arctovish. I knew I wanted one of those Pokemon. So I decided I would decide on the Restricted first in order to see what I had as my options afterward. I decided to go with Calyrex Ice Rider because I've been inspired by Ice Rider Calyrex because of the fast Calyrexes that I've been running around recently. And I felt like, okay, you know what? This could really catch opponents off guard. I think it makes a lot of sense too. Calyx Ice Rider is a pretty big threat, especially with speed control. And you know what? Maybe instead of the Trick Room, I can go with this uh, G-Max Kingler and just fire off really strong attacks with the Calyx next to it. I felt like that would be pretty fun. So I decided to add Calyx to the team. And then afterward, I did have the idea between Dracozolt and Arctozolt just because I felt like I didn't need another water type. So it was between those two. I had the debate about between Arctozolt and Dracozolt for quite a while because I could have the Slush Rush with the Calyx move if I decide to Dynamax Calyrex and then I'll have the Arctozolt. It also has pretty much the same stats as Dracozolt offensively, which is actually pretty sick. But the main thing that attracted me to Dracozolt over Arctozolt this time around was the fact that I resisted Steel, and I thought that was pretty important since I did have two weak to Steel types in Calyrex and Grimstall. So I felt like, you know, I might need that Steel Resist because Zayshans can be a problem. So just having the Draco Zolt here, I felt like worked better. So for the next slot, I knew I wanted something to help against Sun. I really wanted a fire type. It would help against Zayshan as well. So that was where I decided to go. I was really weak to Charizard and Venus, so I felt like. So I wanted something that dealt well with Sun. I thought about Rotom Heat, but I already had an electric type, so I didn't want to stack on the typings. And then I looked at Moltres, and Moltres and Charizard were definitely considerations, I felt like. As I really like the flying type on this team, it really gave me a ground switching, which is nice. I like the idea of Moltres because it's a really hard hitter. And I chose Moltres over Charizard. Now, the reason I chose Moltres over Charizard, because Charizard, of course, with Wildfire is absolutely insane. And of course, if I have solar power by that logic, if I'm using it against the Sun team, then yeah, Charizard would be the better option. But I felt like since I was using Moltres for Zacians as well, and Moltres is probably more versatile than Charizard outside of Dynamax, especially since I don't really plan on Dynamaxing this Pokemon most of the time if necessary so i felt like you know there'll be a lot of end games where i'll bring moltres against zashan teams and or this pokemon whether it's charizard or moltres and i probably will just not be able to dynamax so you know i felt like moltres was better it had a higher base special attack higher bulk in general which is really nice the thing that se separates the moltres and charizard is the solar power on charizard as well as the wildfire but i felt like with this team i didn't really need wildfire chip as much it's always a good but of course i don't think i needed it to the extreme i felt like moltres's natural bulk as well as the base special attack that's higher naturally especially outside the sun especially against those Zacian matchups felt like was more valuable so with the screens as well with Grimmsnarl, I felt like Moltres was a very solid Pokemon to have on this team. And that's why I chose Moltres over Charizard. Now for the last slot, I knew I needed a Rock Resist as well as a Ground Typing for potentially Reggie Eliki. I also really liked the idea of having Lightning Rod for Kingler and Moltres support. So I was looking through and there was Rhyperior and Marowak. I really liked the idea of Rhyperior and Marowak, especially since they're pretty good Pokemon. 
on this team especially they're pretty slow but they can be decently fast especially with the speed control with kingler and the grimson i felt like ooh, i could add these pokemon and they definitely would work here so it's between marok and rapier rapier probably has the higher stats and doesn't rely on the item as much but i decided to go marok just because of the fact that it isn't weak to steal which i felt like was pretty valuable so i ended up adding marok as the last pokemon to the team and that was how the six was formed all right, let's go over the items, the movesets, and the EV spreads of the team. We have Assault Vest Kingler up first with the Hyper Cutter ability with Liquidation, Rock Slide, High Horse Power, and Knock Off. So, GMX Kingler is a Pokemon always interesting to me, and I never really found a great use for it other than, of course, with the Bull Peak and Vicious Rens, but I felt like just having that alone wasn't really that great of an idea. But overall, with the inspiration from the Ice Rider Calyrex, the speedy one, I felt like, ooh, this could be a lot of fun, I think, and justifies the G-Max move from Kingler, I felt. Especially since Kingler helps cover the Calyrex uh, weakness to Incineroar and other fire types. So, I felt like it was pretty cool. Assault Vest was the item of choice here because Kingler's special defense is really poor. Its base HP is also pretty low. So, I need Assault Vest to make it decently bulky, especially for the speed control so I can get it off because it's really important. And yeah, I liked Hypercutter as the ability to prevent the Intimidates. Cheer Force was an option, but of course it doesn't affect max moves. So there was really no point I felt like since I'm planning on maxing Kingler most of the time. I felt like it was just better to have Hypercutter. For the moveset, I chose Liquidation, Rock Slide, High Horsepower, and Knock Off. Liquidation over Grab Hammer just because it doesn't affect the max move. And I prefer like hitting Liquidation in case like there are situations where outside of max I do have to hit a move. I'd rather just go for Liquidation. Rock Slide for the coverage. It also helped Draco's ult with the Sand Rush, which was one of my ideas. So I felt like, you know, that could be an option. If I feel like I got enough speed control initially, I could set up for the Draco's ult with the Rockfall just in case, which is pretty nice. High horsepower for the Max Quake, which I felt like was pretty good coverage. And then Knock Off. So I debated about this move. It was between Knock Off or Superpower. Knock Off maybe for Calyrex and some other things. But I felt like knocking off other items like on P2, for instance, was really nice of an idea. So I felt like, you know, I could go for Max Knuckle and help with like Calyrex or Draco's ult, but I felt like I wouldn't really be clicking the Knuckle anyway. In most cases, I'd probably rather just click the Water move in general and Knock Off would be really good of a move, I think, to click outside of Dynamax. So I felt like I'd rather just have Knock Off in most cases. I end up going with Knock Off. The EV spread here, it's mainly just all about special defense. I have 228 HP, which gives me a 159 HP stat, which is a number that is one less than a number divisible by 16. That just means I take a little less damage from like burn, hail, sand, all of those. Just in case, of course, since I do have the Rockfall option on Kingler, just felt like that was a better option. Invest it all into special defense because this thing has no special defense. And with the Assault Vest, I need all the numbers I can get. So I end up just investing all into special defense. It also just helps that Kingler has a base 130 attack stat. So yeah, I didn't need all that attack. I felt like with the speed control and I knew I was going to go with a bulky Kingler. So I don't need all that attack. I just ended up going with an adamant nature to help give me a little more attack, which I felt like was pretty good because it is a pretty high stat point number. And you know, 130 compared to like the 50, the extra bonus I'll get from the stat nature, it's just worth it on attack more than the low 50 special defense which I felt like was not worth investing the nature specifically. And then I had a little bit of extra defense there to help with like, you know, Zacians and all the other Pokemon that I might be dealing with physically and for speed. And overall, I like this Kingler set. It does really well here. I like having the 75 base speed was actually pretty nice because it allows me to outspeed most Incineroars, especially the ones that go for like outspeed the Timid Amoongus. It does speed creep that by quite a few just naturally, which is just really nice. I felt like and really helps with the speed control there. I could have added a bit more speed. Maybe I could have tried to outspeed base 130s after the G Max foam, but I felt like overall, not many Pokemon hit 130, and I just felt like it wasn't worth it in general. So just ended up going with just a bulky Kingler, investing all into special defense and HP. I felt like this Kingler was still very impressive. It did pretty good damage overall against a lot of my opponents. And yeah, it took attacks really nicely with all the special defense, including the screens. So next Pokemon we have is the Ice Rider Calyrex with weakness policy as one for the ability with Glacial Lens, High Horsepower, Close Combat, and Protect. Now recently, a rank one Choice Scarf Calyrex Ice Rider was pretty... Sh I always felt like with Choice Scarf, yes, you can surprise some things. But I felt like the speed control wasn't worth it because you don't outspeed a lot of Pokemon in the format. You only outspeed the base 100s, which is still pretty impressive. But I feel like with a lot of Pokemon that hit like the 150s, 140s, all of those, I just felt like, you know, it might not be as great. So with the Tailwind and the Foam, however, I think that's a big difference. And I think it makes Calyx even a bigger threat because you can outspeed Zacian's and 
other Calyx is like the Shadow Riders, for instance, which I felt like was pretty solid. Calyx Ice Rider always just has naturally good bulk anyway. So I felt like with screens as well that I was going to have on the team, perfect restricted Pokemon to take advantage of here. And I really did like having the weakness policy as an option here. Since I knew I was going to probably have Life Orb on a different member of the team, I felt like, you know what? I could still Dynamax Calyx, have it under a light screen and reflect. They go for a super effective move, they get heavily punished, and I felt like it was a pretty strong idea. Especially since Calyx already hits pretty hard regardless. I felt like I didn't need the Life Orb extra damage, so yeah, I just ended up going with the weakness policy. And then the moveset, pretty standard, Glacial Lands, High Horse, by Close Combat for the coverage. Protect, of course, you want to preserve the Calyx. Even spread's very simple with Jolly, Max Speed, Max Attack, and 4 Special Defense. And the reason is you do want to outspeed the Shadow Rider Calyxes. And in order to do that, you need max speed on the Calyx in order to do that. Fast Calyx Ice Rider was really fun. It just does a lot of damage. It's still really bulky. It still survived a lot of attacks, which is absolutely insane. And dished out quite a bit of damage. It's really crazy how good this Pokemon is. And with the foam control, it just allows me to really just dish out a lot of damage and not really have to worry about like Trick Room running out, which is really nice, I think. So next we have Light Clay Grimmsnarl with the Prankster Blade with Spear Break, Scary Face, Light Screen, Reflect. I really like the screen's Grimmsnarl and I think it really goes well with the Kingler. I knew I wanted some kind of screen user and I like having the Light Clay for the longevity of the screens, which I think is pretty important for some certain setups. I really just like having that option. Grimmsnarl I think was fantastic. Overall, I felt like it was pretty good with Kingler and Sam the screens I felt like was really nice. So just going with the Grimmsnarl, pretty standard, Scary Face, Spear Break. Light screen reflect. I knew I was going to have both screens to help with the Kingler, make it bulky, be able to survive attacks. It also helps out my other Pokemon as well. I like Spear Break for the coverage and, of course, the lowering special attack, which is useful for Kingler. Good coverage overall. And then last move, I considered a few things. I considered Sucker Punch originally because I was going to have it with Calyx for the weakness policy option if I did consider it. It also helped out against maybe the surprise of the Calyx Shadow Riders, but I felt like overall, I'd rather have Scary Face on the team because like if Kingler goes down or in games I just don't bring Kingler, I feel like I still want some form of speed control and I didn't want to run a trick set. So it's between Scary Face and Thunder Wave and I felt like, you know, I think Scary Face is just more worth it. I don't lose any speed advantage. I think the only Pokemon it might be worth it for is like Dragapult. If I like T-Wave a Dragapult and then knock it out with Calyx, that can be another option. I just didn't want to miss with Scary Face and I want to like Scary Face, maybe like stuff like Reggie Eliki with my for my Moltres or my Draco Soul, which I felt like could be pretty nice. I did have Lightning Rod Marok that would redirect the T-Wave, so I felt like that wasn't the greatest idea. So I felt like Scary Face was the most consistent. And the Eevee spread, I've talked about this Grim Snarl set before. It is based off my Series 9 Players Cup team, but a little bit different. I have a lot more speed than usual because I do want to outspeed Tim and Max Speed Amoongus and Speed Creep like those Incineroars, which is nice. I just think it's really nice just to face against the Grim Snarl Mirror which is pretty important for Spirit Break. Uh, having the faster Spirit Break is really important in those, I feel like. And just, I feel like with the screens, you don't really need exact calcs. I don't have Intimidate on the team either. So I feel like just the screens will just allow me to live most attacks. And usually if I go down, I'll go down anyway. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. Like I'm not living Behemoth Blade even reflect up. It just isn't going to change anything unless I had Intimidate. But since I don't have Intimidate, I feel like the numbers don't change anyway. I've been very comfortable with this Grim Snarl set. It just lives attacks anyway. Not anything specific. It just lives attacks with the screens, which is just good enough to set up more screens potentially or set up speed control, which is just really nice, I feel like, with the Grim Snarl set. And yeah, it's just really comfortable for me. It just speed creeps Timid Amoongus, which is really nice. Also, speeds most other Grim Snarl, so you can go for the Spear Break Wars and just lives attacks so it can set up more screens or like slow down your opponent with Scary Face. Next, we have Draco's ult with the Magnet with Sand Rush for the ability with both Beak Dragon Claw subs to protect. I considered Draco's ult and then I had Arctos ult as well. I felt like the Steel typing was the big one that affected me being resistant to Steel. I felt like was pretty important and I felt like, yeah, Draco's ult can accomplish that. It also really helps that I outspeed, I think, the potential Reggie Elekis, which I felt like was pretty nice. So, you know, I ended up just going with Draco's ult and I feel like with most times I'll probably be Dynamaxing Kingler. Going for the Rock Vault and Dynamax in the Calyx. But if I do Dynamax Calyx, I'm not sure if I'm going to bring Arc Result in the back in the cases. But definitely a potential possibility. I do like having the Magnet on Draco's Ult. I had Life Orb originally, but I did end up choosing to have the Magnet because I would only click Bolt Peak really on the Draco's Ult. So I felt like it really wasn't that worth it. And then I looked at Calyx on Moltres, which I'll get into later. But yeah, Magnet I felt like was a pretty good item. Powering up the Bolt Peak, which is the move I usually click. Sand Rush, of course, for the kingler speed boost with the rock fall which is just really nice and i don't have to rely on hustle of course bolt beak for the power dragon claw for coverage against other dragons like eternatus dragapult palkia etc 
substitute is just really nice here because if they play passive against the drake assault and i'm able to get a free sub up it's really threatening with the bolt beaks afterward it's pretty strong and then protect to preserve the drake assault the ev spread is just very simple max speed max attack and four special defense this allows me to outspeed reggie elekis with the sand rush or the speed control from kingler or grimstall which is really nice and that is all i really need i just need the power i need the speed and then the remaining into special defense next pokemon we have is a life for motors with flame body for the ability with heat wave air slash ancient power and protect now motors is interesting as i said before i don't think i need wildfire and motors was just a generally better pokemon than charizard in most cases the only thing difference is the speed uh, that could hinder it because Charizard does have a base 100 speed, but I felt like, you know, that's acceptable for the extra bulk I'll be getting, the extra special attack that I'll have on the Moltres. I just feel like those stat points were way worth it to me. So, Life Orb on the Moltres. I had Goggles originally for the Venusaurs for the Sleep Powder, but when I looked at the Chaos from Dynamax Moltres, the fact that you can Oko a Dynamax Venusaur with uh, Max Flare or Max Airstream right off the bat is just absolutely insane to me, and I felt... That could be a, like a pretty good reason why I could run Moltres. So yeah, with the life orb on the Moltres, I just felt like oh, the power is really nice. It also helps out with the max rock falls against Charizard, which I felt like was really nice. I like having the extra bulk with the light screen on the Grimmsnarl to maybe like take on the Charizards. I'll still be taking quite a bit of damage, but overall I should be taking it okay. And I really like Moltres to hit the uh, Zacians, and I think it's a pretty good Pokemon outside of Dynamax compared to like Charizard which isn't that great, I think, outside of Dynamax compared to Moltres. So, Heat Wave, Air Slash, Ancient Power, Protect, Heat Wave, of course, Fortifier Coverage, Air Slash for the Max Airstreams, Ancient Power to hit the Charizards, and that's pretty important to me, and the Protect to Preserve, the Moltres, I felt like is pretty nice here. The EV spread is pretty simple. It does allow me to outspeed Reggie Elekis with the Speed Control from Kingler or the Grimmsnarl, which I felt like is really nice. I'm one point above that just because I do want to have a faster Moltres than Dracozole, because if I'm like Dracozole next to Moltres, I'd rather go for the Airstream first and then the Bolt Beak, which I felt like was pretty important. And I just felt like it was something that I can invest in and no problem. It didn't really change too much with how I want to invest because I don't think I need to go with the max speed modest. So I felt like just good enough to outspeed my own Dracozoles and outspeed the Reggie Elekis, which was good enough. Have the max special attack for again, the max flare and the max Airstream calcs on the non-bulky Venusaurs which could be nice or between max flare and the sun and light screen could make a big difference so i really like that and then just the rest into the extra defenses i think moltres is actually a pretty underrated pokemon for non-sun teams because it's actually a pretty good pokemon i think against like zacians and some other stuff like the sun as i mentioned before i think it's actually a really cool pokemon and i really did enjoy using moltres when i was testing it last pokemon we got the fit club marok with lightning rod boomerang rock tomb source and protect now marok was here because i wanted the ground typing which was nice a rock resist as well as immunity to richie aleki while providing lightning rod support for my other pokemon which was really nice fit club of, as the item of choice for marok just makes it way more powerful the best item on marok boomerang i felt like it was pretty nice to have boomerang for the zacians because you can hit a substitute on Zacian and then hit it with another boomerang which is really nice even though it does have the chance to miss i think it's okay and then the rest of the moves i just didn't know what i wanted on marok i considered a bunch of different move sets i had like the substitute set at one point i went with rock tomb and sword stance because i felt like you know i might want a sword stance maybe punishes some intimidating sinors that are like playing really passive i felt like maybe just get the boost on marok is good enough i don't really know what the best set on marok is this Pokemon I did bring a few times, but it was mainly for Lightning Rod or just clicking Boomerang. Rock Tomb I felt like was pretty cool. I don't need Rock Slide, even though it's a stronger max move, because, you know, I felt like, you know, I could Rock Tomb and maybe in some situations they wouldn't expect it. And then that might help out my Drake result, my Moltres or my Kallax potentially. So I liked having the extra four speed control. And I kind of liked the idea of having an idea to hit Charizard potentially, which I thought was pretty nice. And then Sword Stance, just because I felt like, you know, if I can get Sword Stance up maybe next to the Grimmsnarl screens, and it would be really threatening, I felt like. So that was a, definitely a potential option. And then Protect to Preserve the Marok. So for the Eevee spread, I ended up going with an Adamant Nature over Jolly Nature. I didn't outspeed Jolly Zacians or the Shadow Rider Calyxes, and I didn't feel like it was worth outspeeding max speed Adamant Zacians. So I ended up going with an Adamant Nature on the marowak i ended up going with one speed point slower than my kingler i felt like that was a pretty comfortable number and i felt like it was okay with i wanted some bulk on this marowak because i knew it was going to be a switch in in most cases for the lightning rod so i felt like having bulk was pretty important i ended up going with an hp stat that allows me to hit 159 
It's just a number that is one minus the number divisible by 16. As mentioned before, for potentially hail, if I set up my Calyx, for instance, then I ended up having 76 in attack with an adamant nature that gives me a plus one stat point in the attack stat. And then just having the remaining into defense and special defense. I didn't really bring Marok too much, but it was pretty useful for the lightning rod when it did matter. So I felt like it was still a pretty good Pokemon to have. I like that I fulfilled the roles that I needed to do. Even though I didn't bring that much, I felt like it was pretty much okay on the team. Not sure if it could be replaced though. I do think they're probably better mons, but I do really like the lightning rod to help out against Reggie Alakis, which could be a little bit of a pain. And it's pretty good against some Pokemon as well. And they might not expect Marowak to be decently fast and can, you know, surprise a knockout for instance, which is pretty good. So how to use the team and what are the common leads with the team? Well, I'd say the most common thing you're going to do with this team is usually getting up screens with Grimmsnarl and getting speed control up with either Grimmsnarl or the Kingler. The screens are really good with Grimmsnarl, making the Kingler and the rest of the team pretty bulky because they have good natural bulk. And then Calyrex, of course, with the weakest policy is an option that can go for Dynamax or outside of Dynamax is still pretty strong. But usually you'll be ending up Dynamax. I would say either Calyrex, Kingler, and sometimes Moltres, depending on the occasion. I think those are your best Dynamax Pokemon in general. And you go for the speed control with either the Kingler and the Grim Snarl sub screens and dish out a lot of damage and try to overwhelm your opponent using the speed control and the really heavy hits that you can throw off. The common leads, I would say Grim Snarl is definitely one of them. I'd say Grim Snarl with the screens is just really solid with no matter what Pokemon you decide to lead up with. You could lead Grim Snarl plus Calyrex, of course, if you want to Dynamax the Calyrex immediately with the weakest policy, it can be really hard for opponents. And the fast Calyrex can catch up opponents off guard and really dish out a lot of damage. And the screens help replace the lost HP that you would normally have on a bulky Calyx, which is really nice. Kingler, of course, really commonly Grim Snarl Kingler. It's really great because it can set up the screens and the speed control and just wear down your opponent and then set up for your back Pokemon like the Calyx or the Dracozolt, which are really hard hitters, especially when your opponent is slow. Then you have Grim Snarl, of course, with Moltres, which is pretty solid for the Sun matchup. It's really strong against Zacia on teams as well. You can really do a lot of damage with the Moltres and you can slow down stuff with the Grim Snarl, which is always appreciated. And Draco's Ult plus Grimstar is also another really solid lead, I think, with this team because you do have access to screens right away, or you could go for Scary Face, Bolt Beak, and do a lot of damage straight up. Another common lead is just Kingler with anything. Kingler with the max move can just really help set up speed control for Draco's Ult, Moltres, or Calyrex if you don't want to go with the screens mode if you don't think it's necessary. That's definitely a little bit of a case. You can just set up speed control for like Bolt Beak from Draco Salt or Calyx going for really heavy damage. And then other common leads, of course, Calyx is just a really strong lead. It can really dish out a lot of damage and you don't even have to Dynamax it. You can even just lead it as an option or you could set it up for the late game and just dish out a bunch of damage. The Marowak is not a bad lead with Moltres or the Kingler, of course, because of the Lightning Rod protecting these Pokemon from powerful electric type moves. Although I usually prefer leading Grimmsnarl over Marowak because I can set up screens usually first and then maybe get Marowak and of course have that mind game as well which is really nice one thing to note about this team you do want to be careful if you have Marowak and Draco's ult that you are bring because you can bolt beak into your lightning rod Marowak potentially and that would not be great so just watch out for that option but otherwise yeah this team also has very flexible lead options I mean Moltres can also lead with quite a bit here and just dish out quite a bit of damage and of course Draco's ult isn't a bad lead option because you have Grimmsnarl the Kingler and of course the Calyrex which can just threaten a lot of damage is a pretty good offensive mode for slower teams. And that is the show. I hope you all enjoyed the thought process of what went behind the makings of the Kingler team. If you did, please leave a like down below, leave a comment down below. It really does help me out. And if you haven't already, for some reason, make sure you check out the episodes that Kingler was featured in. It was a really fun team and I really did enjoy using Kingler and try out the rental team. You have two weeks to grab it. The code's on your screen right here, but otherwise there is a paste bin available in the description down below. But otherwise, thank you all for tuning in. Have a great day, people, and until we battle again, I'll catch y'all later.